Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial from LearnEnroute.com. And in this series of clips we're talking about the pre-release version of Enroute Fabrication and some of the tools and features that are going to be coming up in upcoming versions of Enroute proper. So in this one I want to talk about one of the biggest changes in Enroute Fabrication and that's the uh, uh, changes that we've done to the tool pathing toolbar and and the reason for that is is that uh, plasmas lasers and water jets uh, don't need all the different strategies they just don't do that there that's mostly a piercing cut and uh, you're just cutting through the object so why have the complication and and then another thing that we've done is and let me just select this to light it up is that we've got a new strategy called curve compensation where we've condensed the uh, different uh, dialogues from the strategy and the cut definition windows into just the information you need to set up your cut when you're creating uh, when you're creating a job on a water jet plasma or laser so the first thing here is the curve width and and you can set up tools of different widths in the tool library and then pick them from the drop down and I'm gonna just settle here with the fifty thousandth of an inch you can pick with your external or internal on a closed geometry do you cut inside or outside the line and uh, let's just click OK here and zoom in on it and you can see that I've created a nice tool path the blue line with the arrowheads is your tool path and I can hit the F9 key to simulate what the full kerf is going to look like and I've got a good visualization there of what the objects going to be and uh, if I click off here and zoom out a little bit and grab these two I'll show you another feature now notice that these two objects are pretty close here they're not touching but they're pretty close now what I'm going to show you is weld offset so I'm going to go back here into my dialog box let's move this over a bit and weld offsets is the next parameter here now with this checked on what it's going to do is if it if it goes through and the curve of cutting one object would cut into the other object uh, Enroute is smart enough to stop it and reverse and go along the opposite object and then come around both pieces and that's going to save you from cutting into an adjacent piece and it's a very handy tool that I've used for years in the conventional program so with weld offset switched on I click OK and I zoom in here and you can see that the curve stopped and pulled out if I hit the F9 key you can see that it didn't cut all the way through there which is good because it didn't cut my whole object um, now this is sometimes you want to keep objects together and sometimes you just want to have it switched on as a safety precaution so that's another nice feature and it's all built into the curve compensation uh, loop corners is another a good tool that you need uh, when you're working with fabrication because a lot of equipment uh, can't have the tool path go right around the corner the curve will wander out uh, you might lose your arc there are a bunch of various reasons so what loop corners is going to do is it's actually going to continue along that line do a nice gentle loop which you can control and pull back in so let me cancel out of that and let's pick the square down here go into curve compensation and in en route uh, if you check on a box a lot of times you will get more information uh, once the uh, parameter becomes active so loop corner switched on now it's asking me what is the um, size of the loop standoff that I want to create on this one I'm just gonna say one inch click OK and here you see what I explained it's gonna come out and instead of turning right around that corner it's going to go out and around and and loop back in which is a very handy feature to have when you're running this type of equipment now let's go back up here and select this I'm just gonna delete the toolpath off of there zoom in and let's show you the next one so let's switch off the loop standoffs now sharp corners this is another thing for controlling how your machine cuts and uh, and what it needs is specific parameters to do a successful cut so if we look here with sharp corner switched on I'm gonna click in here and let's zoom out on the exterior 
and you can see that en route has applied a flat at the top there so it's going to go up and then straight across and then back down and for some machines and some cutting operations this is going to be important to do normally and <clears throat> I'm going to get into the edit screen just by putting my cursor on the toolpath right clicking and seeing on the local menu edit this toolpath so I'm going to bring up my curve compensation as an edit and this time I'm going to switch off sharp corners now watch out here when I uh, click OK click OK and the curve changes the toolpath actually changes now a lot of times this is much faster because your machine can transition from a line to an arc to a line much easier than doing line hard angle line hard angle so this will generally cut faster on your machine but sharp corners might be important for your quality of cut so we give you the option to cut either way now again if I go up here and I right click and I bring up edit this toolpath we'll take a look at our next one and our next parameter is uh, the direction of cut notice that uh, the uh, toolpath has little arrows that showing you that the the machine is going to be moving in this direction now sometimes to, again depending on your machine depending on your material you might want to be able to switch this from climb cutting to conventional cutting and uh, the the one rule of thumb that that I usually follow is if your part uh, has a very bad edge quality but your drop has beautiful edge quality reverse it whatever it is and a lot of times it will actually reverse the cut quality edge to edge so watch the arrows here as I switch from climb to conventional click OK and the arrows reversed so that's a simple way of controlling the direction of cut and uh, I didn't click right on the toolpath so let's go here and say edit this toolpath and then we've got entry exit parameters and again depending on your machine you might want to do a lead in or a lead out one or the other maybe sometimes both and uh, here we've got a variety of ways of controlling that and again as you none closes everything down if I click on arc I can pick the arc radius and the swept angle of the lead-in if I pick line I can pick the length of the line and again the angle of the line leading into the object and then I can have a combination of uh, straight line and radius that uh, has the best of both worlds or the worst of both worlds however you want to take a look at it and again you can do everything the same for exit parameters so let's set this up I'm gonna do an, an arc uh, with a two inch radius and a 40 degree swept as my lead in and then let's just do a line and let's make the line one inch so we can see it and the lead in angle of 10 degrees click OK and I'm going to need to zoom select it here and uh, you see that it's it's uh, it's trying to do what I told it to do there's my actual start point of the th of the object and it's following the contour at a 10 degree angle so it's it's maintaining that 10 degree angle as it goes out of the cut and here since I told it to do a 40 degree swept angle it's actually cutting into itself so this really would not work very well I could probably adjust this so uh, if I go up here to my toolpath menu and uh, I need to have it selected first so I select the object first go up here and I can edit entry exit notice my cursor changes to a crosshair and now I can drag this around and try to find a point there that could work notice how my you know it's following it around so what I really don't want is that lead in to be on the uh, up leg swing and we swing around like that you know that one right there that could work and I can just exit out of it but probably a more uh, a more sensical way of doing this is just to go to edit toolpath and uh, let's make my swept radius uh, 10 degrees here and tab off of that and drop down here and make the length uh, I don't know we'll come in a half an inch that's probably going to be enough to trim it down to what I need 
click OK. And, and this looks much, much more normal for a lead in and lead out. And again, if I needed to adjust where it was, I can go to Edit, Entry, Exit, and then move this around to fit. And it'll just snake its way around the entire object as it goes around. So uh, nice new tool, uh, simplified, clean interface, great way of adding tool paths for en route fabrication. As usual, I hope this helps.